Okay, folks, good morning and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond and it is March the 16th, around 6.05 in the a.m. So what we're going to talk about this morning is economic data that is set to be released. We'll then take a look at the pre-market activity. And then we'll segue over it into our member stock chart request. This is where we take a look at these symbols that our members submit for me to review on video. But before we get started, I would ask you to please head on over to The Contrarian Trader. Help support my work if you get any value. Engage with some really, really great people in the forum, including myself. Get private live streams, real-time live trade alerts. And for silver and gold level members, TrendSpider for free. For those not familiar with what TrendSpider is, they are one of our sponsors. Truly the next generation in charting software, leveling the playing field for the average investor with a trading platform that includes automated technical analysis using algorithms. Outstanding trade alerts, which I use constantly. You'll probably see me use them today. Scanners to help you find winning chart setups. Automate your grunt work, speed up your technical analysis by joining TrendSpider. And again, you get it free with our silver and gold level memberships. They're celebrating a 30% off discount, three years. Congratulations to Team TrendSpider. I'm offering 35% off. Use that discount code below. And they have a great, great series of tutorials with TrendSpider University. So head on over there, take advantage. Again, 35% off. Let's get to the economic data. So beginning with what came out yesterday, we had the Empire State Manufacturing Index. Uh, I don't believe that this is seasonally adjusted, but I will point out that there was an improvement versus the prior month. Again, not sure if this is seasonally adjusted. Uh, today, retail sales coming out, folks. They're expecting a negative number. If this comes out very, very hot, that could, could be construed as inflationary. So watch interest rates. If interest rates rise on a hot retail sales number, that's fear that there is inflation in the pipeline. We already know that there is, according to the PPI, the Producer Price Index. We also get industrial production and capacity utilization all coming out today before 9.15 a.m. Let's get to the pre-market activity. So what I want to kick off with is the Russell 2000. We've spoken a great deal about it of late and the fact that we do have a short position on. We were profitable. It did go against us and now we're looking for a place in which to add more to that position. We held off yesterday because we saw strength into the close, but as we wake up this morning, we're seeing a bit of weakness. We're down about a half percentage point, and we are trading down below this support level. Not a major support level, but not insignificant either. This is a four-hour chart. These are all before-hour charts, unless I say otherwise. Take note of the lower highs on RSI and now lower lows. So it looks as though the small caps are losing a bit of momentum. The mid caps, which going into the week, I thought would outperform the rest of their equity peers, and they did. They were up strong yesterday, but as we talked this morning, they're also down well over a third of a percentage point, just shy of a half percentage point, the NASDAQ 100. A good performance yesterday. A bit more follow-through to the upside today, up over a third of a percentage point. So you could see here that with yields pulling back, as they did yesterday, as they're doing this morning, that growth is performing positively. And value is pulling back but what i will point out is what i pointed out last thursday and friday is that we have a tendency of late to begin the week week on yields and then by friday afternoon end of business day we reverse to close higher 
So don't get lured into a false sense of security quite yet. Let's see how we close out the week in terms of yields. The Dow, down slightly, but it is also seen a breakout point failure. Again, this is a four-hour chart. We broke out yesterday, actually twice. Once here, then failed. Then again here, we failed yet again to hold this breakout point. So I think that ultimately we're going to retrace back down to this lower band of support in red at around 32,620. The 10-year Treasury note, it is up this morning. That means that yields are under pressure yet again, allowing for growth to rally. This is a pretty healthy chart. We may get higher highs here. In fact, let's take our crayon out. Do this, and we have a bit of a higher low on a four-hour time frame. What does that mean for the dollar? The dollar's up, surprisingly, yet it is not looking all that healthy. It was up yesterday as well. It did fade on the day. We had a good bounce back in Friday's pre-market, and it's really just been lethargic ever since. So here is really the line in the sand for the dollar at 91.70. Let's call it 91.72. And let's watch and see whether or not we're putting in a lower high. Now with the dollar up, we'll want to take a look at gold. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Gold. Gold is up this morning slightly, about $1.10 the ounce. We're bumping up against some resistance here. We had a very good day yesterday. We are long of gold, silver, the miners. Actually, we're not long of gold. We're long of the gold miners. I stand corrected. Silver, taking it on the chin this morning, down over a half percentage point. I had a very good day yesterday. So let's memorialize this resistance level here and watch and see whether or not it breaks through. And this now becomes support. So silver, while it had a great day yesterday, still has not broken trend, which is down. Taking a look at GameStop in the pre-market, looks like it's going to take an eight-point hit. I'm getting the feeling here that we have a lower high getting put in, and we're breaking down to new lower lows. So warning flag on the track here for GameStop. Be careful, folks. Intercontinental Exchange is a position that we discussed over the weekend with members as a watch stock. We did open up a position yesterday. We will be looking to add to this position. I did send out an alert. And we will be looking to add to this position because we broke out on both a weekly time frame last week, retested this week, daily time frame. We did a retest of the breakout point yesterday. And there is no pre-market activity as of yet. But you can see that we're setting up potentially for a nice Bollinger Band squeeze on this 30-minute chart. Very tight. The bands are beginning to narrow, uh, widen out. So ice remains very interesting, especially if we see a resumption of this commodity rally, which we saw in earnest with precious metals yesterday. Now, moving on over to member stock chart requests, I have symbols for John S., He's looking for SLX. Tuan is looking for FNKO, T, TIGR. Minoj, Triple M, ITA. And Nestor's looking for US Steel. So let's get to it. All right, so SLX is the Vanex Steel ETF. Uh, steel is looking very good. I was asked about Rio Tinto the other day. It looks, seems to be an outlier as the monthly chart of Rio Tinto not looking pretty. Here's Rio. So that may be a company-specific issue. Whereas the rest of the steel complex is looking pretty good. We have a strong month so far, up over 8.5% weekly chart. And I'll mention before we leave this chart, volume very strong. Weekly chart, thus far this week, we have a bit of a fade. 
and an inside week, meaning no new high, no new low on the steel ETF. Daily chart, an outside reversal bar yesterday, very close to one anyway. So it looks what we like what we did here is we broke out here on the 11th of March by gapping up. Then on Monday, what we did is we pulled back, we filled the gap. I think we're heading up higher. I like the setup here, despite the fact we were down yesterday. So long as we hold $53 per share, I'm bullish on SLX. Now, take a look at seasonality for SLX. You can see that over the past six years, we've only traded up 29% of the time in the month of March. We are up strong for this month. So very, very good price action so far. And the month of April is generally very favorable up 67% of the times. So seasonality, we're bucking seasonality at current, and we're heading into a month that appears historically favorable going back to 2015. So SLX looking good here, especially if value continues to outperform and we do get infrastructure spending. So we are bullish on SLX. Okay, Funko, next chart up. This is for Tuan. Monthly chart. A beautiful, beautiful chart. But you can't buy it yet. And we'll go to that reason in a moment. $18 per share was resistance. That is now in the rearview mirror, but I think we may be challenging that yet again. Let's drill down to a weekly chart. We broke out this week above that level. The question is, do we stay there? And the reason why I have mixed comments about FNKO is because on a daily chart, we're so extended. We have RSI, which is at 84. We're trading above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band for the third consecutive day. Can it move up higher? Sure, of course it can. The question is, does it hold support? Eventually, we're going to get a pullback here. I think you're going to get a better buying opportunity. Where might that be? If we continue to remain extended, this rising 50-period moving average on a daily time frame is proven to be very reliable support. It was support here and here. But it's going to take some time to play catch up with the share price. If you're looking for price support, a filling of the gap here, at 1536 is certainly achievable and that's where I would be setting up my alerts and there we go we'll keep this active for two weeks and now we set it and forget it now to give us a heads up that FNKO is weakening up I want to get notified when we break through support if and when we break through maybe it'll never happen maybe we'll just consolidate there and go up higher and the reason why i'm typing in here watch closely is because that monthly chart looks very attractive so longer term i'm bullish on fnko but short term i think that we're a bit frothy here and setting up for a pullback now rsi at 84 uh means nothing in and of itself just that we're overbought but we can get more overbought i would not chase it here because the probability of this ending well is improbable you've already seen topping action meaning some selling pressure on friday and monday so just be careful here good volume yesterday at and still struggling to get out of its own way here on a monthly chart but we are forming a very nice base this is a yielder Weekly chart. So the last time we spoke about this, I believe we were trading down below this resistance level. My alert is expired here. Let's get rid of these. And we broke out last week out of this resistance level in purple. And uh, we closed there. We're retesting this week. Uh, AT&T is looking interesting. 
daily chart. On a daily chart, we're at resistance. If we start trading above resistance here, let's call it 3025, we'll round it up. That would be very attractive. And if you're looking at this as an investment, I have no problem with you scratching the itch, opening up a position now, and just simply adding on strength. Basically, what we want is the market to confirm that AT&T is worthy of our investment dollar by being able to break out above resistance levels. And if it can't, well, we sit with a small position and we wait for it to consolidate, get rid of weak longs, and then ultimately when it breaks out, we could always add more. And it's paying you to wait. I'm not sure what the dividend is, but I know it's pretty fat. So keep this active for a couple of weeks, and we are good to go. Now, another support level that we may want to watch for if the market weakens up is a pullback to 29.59. We'll keep some sensitivity, and we'll keep this active for 30 days. Touch, bounce. So we'll get notified within the next 30 days of if we happen to pull back, retest the support level at around 29.60 per share, and that'll give us a really good risk-reward entry point on AT&T. And our alert is set. The next chart up is also Fortuan, TIGR, up FinTech holding. Monthly chart. We have seen some of the froth come off here on TIGR. In fact, we retraced quite a bit down to 16.28 and then rallied back. Still negative on the month. Weekly chart. Last week, a nice inside week and a reversal week. And this week, we have broken out. Would I buy here? Not quite sure, but I will set an alert at support. So we'll get notified if we tap the support level, which I think that we probably will. And it'll be a healthy thing to get more of a pullback here to validate that this breakout is for real. I want to keep a little bit more sensitivity on here. There we go. That's better. And our alert is set. Daily chart, yeah, ideally we get a pullback and do a retest. And where our alert is set is right where, it may be hard to see for you folks, but right where we have a rising 50-period moving average. So really good support below. This raindrop chart, this is a mixture of candlestick and volume-weighted moving average. Left side of your raindrop is the morning price action. Right side is the afternoon price action. And when you see a red raindrop with a fat belly on the right side, that means it was selling into the close. If it's green and you have a fat belly at the top of that raindrop, that means you saw buying into the close. So I think we can get a further pullback here this morning, or at least in the next couple of days. The next chart up, 3M. Monthly chart, love it. Right off the bat, love it. Uh, this is the first time we have been trading for any period of time above its 50-month moving average since last April, almost a full year. And what you're looking at here is an inverted head and shoulder setup. Here's your left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and you could use the 50-period moving average as your neckline, and we're above it right now. 3M is breaking out. Weekly chart, uh, three sequential rising bars here. Uh, these usually come in threes. It looks as though we're probably going to have a good week this week. I would expect a pullback in the next couple of weeks, though. That would be a buying opportunity, especially if yields continue up higher. This is certainly a value play and one that will do well in a rising interest rate environment. Daily chart. A huge day yesterday. And it was a huge day where yields pulled back and growth outperformed. So very strong price action here. Loving the RSI, higher lows, higher highs. 
Beautiful raindrop chart. I mentioned this earlier. Bullish when you see the right side of your raindrop with a big fat belly and it's green. That's buying into the close. And we saw a big volume bar yesterday in green. That's institutional demand. Good stuff. 3M, I like it. Very bullish. ITA, the U.S. Aerospace and Defense iShares. We went over the XAR over the weekend. I like this sector. And we have broken out. And this volume shelf right here makes for a great support level. 103 spot, 1-2 is support. We closed at 106 spot, 06. So we're not too far away from the breakout point to go opening up a position. But let's do a deeper dive, see what else is going on here on a weekly time frame. Loving the RSI. Higher lows, higher highs. Yesterday was a down day. We retested the support level. I would love to see a retest of, let's make this a little bit less sensitive, of this breakout point. There we go. And we'll keep that active for a couple of weeks. We want to know if we touch or bounce off of this breakout point. That would be a great entry point. Again, at around 103.50, thereabouts, give or take a dime. We do have a new weekly high. Daily chart. Yeah, we got a little bit of a head of ourselves relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. No big deal. Ideally, the reaction is a pullback and a retest. And that would be a buying opportunity. So ITA, very bullish on longer term. Leaving things off with U.S. Steel monthly chart. Flirting with a major league breakout here. We were higher. We gave up a little bit of gains. 24.78 is pretty stiff resistance. It was resistance back here in January. We've pulled back. And now we are heading up for another test. I think we're going to break out here. Weekly chart. We're down on the week so far. Holding this volume shelf is critical. At current, we're below it at 2246. A close back above that mark would be bullish. That sets us up for a rally up to 2478, which is resistance on a monthly time frame. Daily chart. So the daily chart looking not wonderful. You saw some selling into the close yesterday. We were down on volume. If we get a pullback to 21.49, that makes for a great entry point. We'll keep that active for the week. And our alert is set. And if we manage to recapture this support level, then we'll get notified as well. And we'll keep it active for seven days. And we're good to go. U.S. Steel, bullish. And with that, folks, everybody have a profitable trading day. And in closing, please help support the channel. Get members-only private live streams and commentary, trade alerts. And, of course, members' stock chart requests and TrendSpider for free. When you join Silver or Gold, head on over to the website using the link below. Start your two-week free trial offer. And don't forget to support our sponsors over at TrendSpider, either by joining the contrarian trader or subscribing to their servers use that link below and get a 35 percent discount off of any one of their membership levels great guys you'll enjoy their service and everybody again have a profitable trading day be well